Last year, I made a video where I showed off a project of mine that I had been working on and off on for a couple of years, and it's called Kirby Maker. As the name implies, this is a game like Mario Maker, but with Kirby instead. And at the end of that video, I asked you guys if you would like to see this project brought back, and there was an overwhelming consensus. Yes. So because of this, and because of the fact that I haven't uploaded a video in quite a while, I've decided to bring this project back. But before we get started, I want to make something very clear. Since this is a Nintendo fan game, I'm not going to be able to release this project, at least in a normal way. Because Nintendo has an extensive history of destroying fan projects. Now I know this might sound disappointing at first, but the main goals of this project are to improve my skills as a programmer slash designer, and to show off my love for Kirby games. So hopefully you'll still find this journey entertaining nonetheless. So without any further ado, let's start creating Kirby Maker. All right, here we are in Visual Studios. I'm writing the code for this project in C++, and I'm using a library called SFML to handle graphics rendering and a whole slew of other useful things. I am also using a library of my own called Glass that works with SFML and allows me to create UI elements, like buttons and sliders, that will come in handy later on. But as a first task, I decided it would be good to create a dynamic viewport system. What does this mean? Well, if you have an application that's designed well, it should be able to adjust its graphics when the aspect ratio of the window changes, instead of stretching the graphics to make up the difference. Now, I have a confession to make. Up until this point, I haven't actually designed any of my applications with the aspect ratio resizing in mind, so putting this idea into code proved to be fairly challenging, since I was getting confused with all the screen transformations that were going on. Luckily, after some extensive trial and error, I was able to get it working, and I even created a demonstration to show this. When I resize the window, changing the aspect ratio, the rectangle's aspect ratio is preserved instead of being stretched. From here, I wrote a short function that allows me to anchor graphics to specific points on the window, regardless of the viewport size. And to demonstrate this, I created 9 squares that are anchored to the edges and middle of the screen. And as I resized the window, they remained locked onto their respective part of the window. Now that we have some important boilerplate code done and out of the way, it's time to start bringing this game to life. And to do this, I'm going to create a system to represent the levels within this game. To get started, I laid out a hierarchy of classes to represent the different parts of a level. This includes blocks, walls, enemies, and the player. And then the main level class is composed of all of these elements. Once I had enough of each class implemented, I turned my attention to creating some rendering code to display the newly created levels. But before I could do this, I needed some way of transforming the area where the level is rendered. So to achieve this, I created a camera class that allows me to control the region that can be rendered by the game. And to test it out, I added a method to move the camera around using the keyboard. Here is an early demonstration of this in action. The next thing I worked on implementing was a zooming feature. This will allow me to change the scale of the tiles at will. But this added an extra level of complexity to the screen transformation code, and caused some of the most unique bugs I've seen in a while. But as with everything else, I got it working after some trial and error. Since the basic tile rendering code is now complete, I decided the next thing to do would be to modify it to support texture rendering. And while we're on the topic of textures, I want to explain something. In Mario Maker, you're able to change the game style between a couple of different Mario games from over the decades. And in this spirit, I want to do the same thing with this project. The games I've already decided that I want to support are Kirby's Dream Land and Kirby's Adventure. This is only two games though, and I'm willing to support up to one more. So if you have any suggestions on which game style I should add, just drop it in the comments down below. Anyways, getting back to the code, modifying the rendering code required changing the tiles from being rendered with solid rectangles to instead using individual vertex data. This allows me to set something called texture coordinates for each tile that allows it to render a region of a texture sheet instead of an entire texture. Here's what this looks like with some random tile data. Also, as you can see, I implemented collision as well. I actually did this pretty early on, but I didn't mention it because I ended up spending like a week on it since I kept making some really silly mistakes. 
Either way, this project is looking more and more Kirby-esque with each edition. Now that we have tile rendering, collision, and a camera system complete, this project is now at the point where I'm able to start working on one of the most important elements, and the one that will make this a maker game, an editor. To get started, I created some brand new C++ files to separate the editor from the rest of the code we've already written. And the way I did this was by creating two separate folders called Engine and Game. The Engine folder will contain all of the code that acts as a framework for the rest of the project. So this includes window management code, basic rendering functions, and any other kind of utility that will be used quite frequently. The Game folder, on the other hand, will contain the rest of the source code that will deal with the elements that are higher level and actually make the game the way it is to the user, like the editor. Now my first priority was to create an outline of the level so that the user can easily see the area that can be edited. And I accomplished this by blacking out the area outside of the bounds of the level, like so. This idea actually originated from the previous Kirby Maker, and there's another idea that I want to steal from here, which are these level size changing buttons. Implementing these was very difficult, since I wanted them to be on all four sides. This is a problem though, because this meant that resizing the level on some of the sides could result in the program going beyond the bounds of the array where all of the level data is stored. So to fix this, I came up with a convoluted system to shift all of the block and wall information to the center once a side is hit. In practice, this allows the user to expand or shrink the level in any direction they want. And once a bound is reached, the buttons will automatically darken to signify that they cannot be pressed any longer. Now I messed around with a bunch of different button styles and ways of displaying them to the user, and the best I was able to come up with was these square buttons that appear once you move to any one of the sides. If you have any ideas for how to improve this though, please let me know, because they're kind of driving me crazy. And the last thing I decided to add for now is a basic tile editor that simply uses the mouse scroll wheel to change tiles. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode in this new series. If you have any recommendations for things you would like added to this project, just let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys as always for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye